up going down, and Luffy just refuses to let any of his teammates die. Unreal hold coming in here from the Shanghai Dragons. We're into overtime now. Drive by Sleep Dart and the Vancouver Titans. Hex, they didn't even get a single point. Super gonna be taken down and fall for the Silver Mage Speed trying to survive. He's going for him. He's going for the fight. He's got Sinatra and oh. Cobb scoops in. Hey everyone, and welcome to Inside Esports. I'll be acting as your support main, keeping you healed and boosted as we break down the bonkers weekend that we had with the Overwatch League Stage 3 playoffs. But before we call Ronald, Renanthra, Lee, let's take a look at the best plays from the weekend. Roll the highlights. Yeah, played very, very well, but now they're going to be behind it because Stitch is going to have the EMP first. There it is, there it is, there it is. The double from Dink. Direct rockets as well. Youngjin on the Brigida to seal the deal to finish it. The sleep dart, the shield bash, another EMP from DM. Mono can do nothing right now but flail ineffectively. And that is it. The Shanghai Dragons are going to the semis. ends up going down, and Luffy just refuses to let any of his teammates die. Unreal hold coming in here from the Shanghai Dragons. We're into overtime now. Drive by Sleep Dart and the Vancouver Titans. Hex, they didn't even get a single point. DM is not in this anymore, but so is soon. What's he getting out of this visor? He needs a target. He's hunting for it, and it's not going to happen. The Shanghai Dragons, Hex. Just like that, we're looking at the fight. There's action everywhere. But the entire time, they were winning the point. Not just try to win it out. Barrier denying a lot of sight. Let's put DM still managed to find some purpose. No Pops around it. No way! And he gets the double tap. Plays it perfectly. Gets the hit. Now takes Shoyovin out of the mech in midair. This guy is an absolute maniac. Because of Black, we will find a Barrage is just going to be layered in. Depends upon the kill and actually finally going to be taken down. Gets a follow up again on the Rascal Ding. Super going to be taken down and falls with a sliver of HP. Tries to survive. He's going for him. He's going for the fight. He's got Sinatra and oh. Koma scoops in. Gets that tag team. They take him out. Rez comes back in, super back into the fight, but a violate on the tree. Over now with the Barrage layered in. Means they all get taken down. It is just Moth by himself. Trying to buy time, but he cannot do it. No one is close. Reverse sweep. Not going to happen. The Shanghai Dragons, for the first time, will be your stage three champions. So it was mostly a Shanghai Dragons highlight reel, but that doesn't mean there wasn't anything to talk about. So to help us break down the Stage 3 playoff weekend, we have our friend Ron Renanthra Lee joining us. How's it going, Ron, buddy? I'm doing well. I had a lot of fun watching that final. I'm sure a lot of people did, and it was definitely unexpected. Yeah, uh, a shock uh, for, for many of us. Let's start with the obvious topic then, the Cinderella story, uh, the Shanghai Dragons going from 0 and 40 to Stage 3 champs. Um, so first of all, what second how? And elaborate. <laughs> What's going on here, Ron? I mean, I, I think a lot of people are going to be really fixated on that 0 to 40 narrative. But for me, I, I'd like to stray away from that a little bit. I think these finals are a true testament to the new power of the Shanghai Dragons roster. Mm. Um, I think it's almost unfair to give the 040 kind of tainted history to this new roster that is largely built off the Kongju Panthera core from Contenders Korea. Right. I mean, there, there's such a vibrant and robust history and tapestry here of a story that's being ignored because everyone's so focused on 040. Right. Um, obviously, that was an abysmal record in all of sports history, but Kongju Panthera have been this team that's always been second in Korea, and now they finally got to get picked up to join an Overwatch League team, um, managing to kind of finally break free of their second place curse. You know, uh, Luffy has been at a stage final like three times, and this is the first time he's ever won. And mm. Gomsu's been in esports for five years, and he's finally won. I I'd like to really uh, praise them for kind of coming all the way here to another country and winning the whole thing uh, not focus on 040. Well, it should be an even more interesting story if we ultimately see the Shanghai Dragons going up against the Vancouver Titans in the season final, should that <laughs> ultimately play out. But we do have to talk about the San Francisco Shock. They have been in the top half of the league throughout most of the second season. They swept their side of the bracket and very nearly reverse swept the Dragons there. Uh, but where did they ultimately falter in that final match and what should they be focusing on moving forward? So I think the Shock should get a lot of credit for slowly figuring out the Dragons as the series continued. Um, obviously, they had to claw their way back, and they almost made it out with the heist. But they unfortunately fell on Dorado, which 
when you're playing in Overwatch League and Overwatch as a game in general, um, you're eventually going to be withered down in maps you're comfortable with. So mm. Shanghai kind of got the ones they're really good with with their compositions to start with the triple DPS Orisa and such, um, where maps where Ghost will struggle against you know getting getting oinked and yoinked uh, pretty often and focused up by the far and widow and these really strong crossfires. Mm. So Shock eventually got a few maps where they're starting to learn Shanghai's style, um, but they're not ones for their where their style can be really explosive and such. So eventually it got to Dorado and they're like kind of run out. But I do think that maybe if this was the best of nine and Shanghai Dragons maybe had to play a lot more maps, they right. probably would have lost even. So it's it a lot tighter. Um, I mean, the, the score is pretty tight, but it could have been even tighter if this was an extended series. It's interesting to hear you say that, that if it was a longer battle, it, the Shock might have pulled it out ultimately, because looking at the two of them in terms of their play style that we were watching over the weekend, Shock was definitely a, more about sustaining and the Dragons more about delivering that you know impactful damage, obviously, with Ding and Diem in there. Uh, we do have to talk about their their lineup there with that Doomfist and Hammy and this uh, you know impending 2-2-2 lock. So uh, what are you thinking about uh, moving forward? Are we going to see a, a huge change in, in what people are running and how will this affect both the dragons and the shock uh i think a lot of the meta will start shifting towards arisa roadhog compositions a lot of the strong bulk that comes in a 3-3 that comes with the extra support and extra tank um, are going to be difficult to play against really really strong crossfire compositions uh, under Russell Hog by themselves as a tank line is already a massive force to be reckoned with in the front. Mm. If you add another DPS on the side, like you said, the Widowmaker, the Faro, the Doomfist, you have a lot of angles where things can potentially be one or two shot um, without worry. And so not having that extra support attack to give you the extra resource of mitigation will be uh, a large pain. So mm. I think in the future we'll see a lot more Arisa Hog for sure. Uh, I would not be surprised to see a lot more Widow again. Right. Um, but then to kind of deal with that, uh, maybe a small resurgence of dive. Uh, you know, Brig is a great hero in a three support composition, but not so much in a two support composition. You get to really capitalize on her more noticeable weaknesses, like her lack of prolonged healing and lack of ranged healing. Right. So, you know, with her subbed out, you can see Tracer come in again and Genji, and that'll be a lot of fun. Well, I'm, I, I have to go to this topic because we've talked about this a lot on the show before uh, to discuss more of this 2-2-2 two, two, two lock. I mean, it was... <laughs> suggested or, or uh, is proposed to basically you know squash the goats meta that we've seen but then this past weekend goats was already kind of gone so is this now something that's heavy-handed because this exciting you know three dps play that we're seeing i kind of <laughs> now that it's here i don't want it to go away so soon should we be locking 222 now i think it probably is a good time to. I think a lot of the reasons we're seeing uh, things like triple DPS and stuff uh, still about is because the meta is in a transitionary period, but mm. that's because the pros don't know what's perfect yet or what's kind of ideal. I don't think we've achieved a state of perfect balance, and as heroes are released and patches are hit, we never will. It'll always be in flux. There'll always be eventually a point where all the pros are playing the same thing, unless we lock it to 222 and kind of prevent the next future Brigitte, so to speak, right? Right. Uh, it, it's probably smart for us to go with the nuclear option now, limit it to 222, and let balancing be a little bit easier, in my opinion, mm. so that these things never come up again. All right, then. Well, you are more knowledgeable. <laughs> I will I will go with your thoughts on well, that. Thank you for keeping us... <laughs> Thanks for keeping us updated, Ron. We better get you back in studio soon because my heartbeat is all out of rhythm without you. Well, I'll be back hopefully next week, and then you and me could uh, complain some more on the couch.